Synopsis of Joaquin, the Claude Duval of California. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Avai in August 2021. Joaquin, the Claude Duval of California, or The Marauder of the Mines, a Romance Founded on Truth, by Henry L. Williams. Synopsis Many are still living of those who can yet recall the feats of the man whose name gives title to this book. Joaquin Murrieta was the son of worthy parents, and nothing in his early youth betokened any traits of the monster which he afterwards became. He left Sonora, the lovely country of his birth, and visited the province of Mexico, where he became attached to the household of the then famous Santa Anna. Quarrelling with one of the attaches, he openly insulted him, but the man he insulted did not resent it, and Joaquin scornfully rode away, to soon after reappear in his native town. Here he married a new Sonorian, Carmela Felix. A year of tranquil happiness had barely passed before he was summoned by his brother to visit him at the mission of San Jose in California. He went, accompanied by his wife. Carlos, the brother, was rejoiced to have Joaquin with him. Together they proceeded upon some business to the mines. Here a friend of theirs, Flores, was found in possession of a mule alleged to have been stolen. Carlos was with Flores at the time of his arrest, and the first thing that Joaquin knew of the arrest of his brother was seeing the two friends hanging from a tree, dead. From that moment, Joaquin's nature and disposition underwent a fearful change. Still, however, at the entreaties of his wife, Joaquin resumed work as a miner. On one occasion, a set of ruffians tried to drive him from the claim on which he was at work. Joaquin resisted, pistols flashed, Joaquin fell, wounded and senseless. When he awoke to reason, it was to find Carmela, worse than dead, beside him. From this moment the fires of perdition appeared to blaze in his heart. From crime to crime he passed on with furious rage, until there was hardly a town in California that couldn't show the victims of his fatal bullet or the smouldering ruins caused by his torch. In the following pages every trace of his blood-stained footsteps is closely followed. Some of the facts are furnished by contemporary witnesses, most of them by official documents. He proceeded from step to step, wading deeper and deeper into crime, until quiet citizens were almost afraid to breathe his name aloud. Nor was he alone in his nefarious exploits. His infamous notoriety surrounded him with a band of satellites, only inferior to himself in his bad eminence. Resolute men went, sometimes in parties, sometimes singly, to waylay and capture him, very few, however, returned to say anything of his whereabouts. In some solitary gully the daring men would be found, with some token or other left to signify that they had met their death at the hands of Joaquin or some of his heartless lieutenants. So great at length became the terror inspired by his ruthless deeds, and fright so magnified them, that hundreds swore that there was not one Joaquin, but a dozen at the least. Sheriffs of counties hunted him with picked men. The governor of the state offered vast rewards for his capture, dead or alive. Eventually he fell into the hands of a brave American, Captain Love, who secured him in the jail at Martinez, from which he was taken by force and hung by a number of Mexicans. He was decapitated, and his head publicly exhibited in San Francisco. In addition to this being a faithful narration of the fearful deeds of Joaquin, incidentally the work gives a faithful delineation of life in the diggings in the early days of California, when almost every nugget of gold was blood-spotted, 
ihr rude justice bared her death-dealing arm. End of synopsis.